The story starts with scientists all over the world begin to notice that their past discoveries and achievements are being proven wrong one by one. The laws of physics humans depended on are starting to act in unexpected ways and being proven wrong. Many scientists worldwide started taking their own lives. Within a few months, large scientific projects that were once underway come to a halt. After seeing scientists dying for odd and unfortunate reasons, the government starts to pay attention to these issues. They discovered that the scientists who were dying had something in common. They see mysterious numbers that seem like a countdown. The head of British intelligence, Wade, assigns his skilled detective, Dashi, to investigate why all these scientific projects were suddenly stopped and why so many scientists are dying. Dashi finds out that not long before, a scientist named Vera, who was part of a five-person team, died by suicide during an experiment. So, Dashi decides to watch the remaining four members closely to learn something new. Here are the members. First, there's Jin, who knows a lot about the multidimensional field. Second, Sol, who is working on the Large Hadron Collider. Third, Augie, who has just started a new company and has discovered a formula to create a super strong material. Fourth, Will, who is a theorist. Lastly, Jack, a millionaire who supports all their projects. Jin and Augie were discussing why many scientists are dying and why they are getting incorrect results from their formulas, which were based on Earth's physics. Augie also starts to see a countdown with odd numbers, which she initially ignores. However, she starts feeling that something unusual is happening. During Vera's memorial, she tells Jin that she's been noticing odd numbers that seemed invisible to others. Later, while Augie was on her own, enjoying a smoke, an weird girl approaches her. They struck up a casual chat, during which she mentions about countdown Augie was witnessing. She warned that the countdown's end signals that she will die like already dead scientists. Augie was trying to understand her situation. The girl she reveals her name as Tatiana. That countdown can be stopped, but for that she advises Augie to suspend her project research on nanofiber research. To persuade her, Tatiana proposed she observe the sky at midnight at 12 a.m. She tells her that entire universe will tell her to do the same. After that next day, Augie, with Saul's company, waits till 12 a.m. At 12 a.m., all the stars in the sky suddenly starts to blink, a sight observable from everywhere on Earth. The mystery of how these events are happening remains unsolved. To safeguard herself and her colleagues, she directs her company to stop their ongoing research. Once they did, the countdown she was witnessing vanished. This suggests that the scientists being targeted were also told to stop their ongoing research with those failing have died. But who are these people who want to stop scientific research? Meanwhile, Jin decides to investigate further by visiting Vera's house. There, Vera's mother gives her an exceptionally advanced virtual reality helmet. Upon trying it, Jin finds herself in a hyper-realistic alternative reality, far beyond any current technological achievements where she could feel them and even smell the people around her. Jin informs his wealthy friend Jack about the VR helmet. Both are astounded by this advanced virtual reality program, deeming it impossible with today's technology. Driven by curiosity, they explore this virtual world together and encounter a planet suffering from severe cosmic catastrophes. These include sudden intense heat waves, drastic temperature drops, and occasional loss of gravity. The inhabitants there dehydrate themselves into a dried body state, and when planet's conditions stabilize, the dried body again absorbs moisture and turn back into living people. Jack and Jin were intrigued by the severe environmental fluctuations on this planet within the virtual reality. After immersing themselves in this virtual reality for an extended period, they uncovered that the planet orbited not one, but three suns. This unique celestial arrangement resulted in unpredictable climate changes and extreme weather patterns due to the complex gravitational interactions among the three suns. Moreover, they learned that they were not the only scientists navigating this virtual environment in search of answers. Many others had ventured into this VR world. Jack and Jin shared their findings with these fellow scientists, pointing out that the erratic behavior of the planet's climate was a direct result of the three-body problem which means when the planet revolve around the one sun, the gravity of other two suns pulls the planet off from its orbit, which results in fluctuations in the climate of the planet. After which, Jin and Jack both are declared the winners of this reality, because all their calculations were correct, and they are told that they will soon be able to meet the creator of this virtual reality. Detective Dashi shared with his superior Wade that he discovered an advanced helmet near the sites of several scientists' deaths. This helmet's technology was far beyond current human capabilities. When someone uses it, not only do they experience a hyper-realistic sensation, but the device also seems to interact directly with the user's brain neurons. It appears designed to identify highly intelligent individuals. 
Dashi stressed the urgency of uncovering the creator of this technology. The following day, Dashi visited Augie to inquire why she abruptly halted her latest research project. Augie confessed the truth, aware that it might sound unbelievable to him. However, Dashi believed her, especially after showing her CCTV footage from the night Augie had an encounter with the mysterious girl, Tatiana. Intriguingly, in the footage, Augie appeared to be talking to herself, yet another cigarette was visibly burning, indicating someone else's presence who had been digitally erased. He informed Augie that scientists had been targeted for assassination and their projects terminated in recent days. Dashi pointed out was how someone could manipulate the fundamental laws of physics, suggesting a level of technological advancement and their understanding far beyond current human reach. Meanwhile, Jack and Jin managed to locate the creator of the virtual reality system. To their astonishment, they encountered Tatiana there, who revealed herself as the creator of the VR game. She explained that the purpose of the game was to find the most intelligent peoples. Tatiana disclosed that 400 light years from Earth, there exists a solar system where three massive stars orbit each other. This system is home to aliens from a planet they call Senti. The experiences that Jack and Jin had within the VR helmet weren't fictional scenarios, but real occurrences on Senti, the alien planet. The extreme environmental fluctuations they witnessed were actual conditions that the Senti experience. Tatiana went on to explain that although these aliens don't resemble humans, they chose human forms to communicate more effectively with people on Earth. These events really happened on their planet. The Senti alien race realized they could no longer survive there due to the destructive potential of their three suns. Their only option to save their species was to find a new habitable planet. That's when they discovered Earth and set off in a spaceship, which would take 400 years to reach Earth. Before arriving, they reached out to selected people on Earth, proposing a shared future where humans and Senti aliens could coexist. Then Tatiana made a secret organization working to integrate the world's brightest scientists into their plan aiming to facilitate the arrival of the Senti aliens. She revealed that her organization had been behind the recent halts in research and the elimination of certain scientists, intending to prevent humanity from advancing to a point where they could potentially resist the Senti aliens. Jack, upon hearing this, felt betrayed and questioned why humans should assist the aliens, leading to his departure. On the other hand, Jin saw an opportunity in Tatiana's revelation. Deciding to join the organization, Jin received an offer letter from Tatiana inviting her to a significant meeting where she would meet the organization's leader and learn more about their future plans. This secret organization started back in 58 years ago, in 1966, amid the Cultural Revolution in China. During that religious factions branded scientists as demons, accusing them of undermining their beliefs. At that time, a famous scientist was publicly executed. That time, his daughter Wenji couldn't do anything. Wenji was forced into labor camps. However, her scientific aptitude did not go unnoticed, and she was eventually assigned to work in a laboratory. There, Chinese scientists invented a powerful radio transmitter capable of sending signals into far into deep space. The aim was to reach out to potential alien civilizations and to confirm we are not alone in the universe. Years passed without any response. Despite many years passing without any sign of extraterrestrial life, Wenji had a breakthrough idea, to use the sun as a signal amplifier. Eight years after implementing this innovative technique, Wenji received the first ever response from an alien civilization. This contact made it clear that the aliens were more technologically advanced than humans, and if they discovered Earth's location, they could potentially conquer it and dominate humanity. Wenji's faith in humanity was deeply shaken by the traumatic experience of witnessing his father's death at the hands of those who denounced science. Feeling disillusioned with humans, Wenji believed that enslavement by aliens might be preferable and thus invited them to Earth, envisioning a new order. During this period, Wenji met a billionaire named Mike, who shared same vision as her. With help of him, she left China and established a secret society or cult in the United States. With Mike's vast wealth, they acquired large ships, equipped them with sophisticated radio antennas, and began communicating with the aliens. They shared detailed information about Earth and humanity, effectively inviting an alien presence. Meanwhile, Jack, who had previously rejected Tatiana's proposal to assist the aliens, found himself in a perilous situation. Tatiana confronts Jack at his home. She kills him, making it clear that the secret cult will not tolerate anyone who might oppose their agenda or pose a risk to their mission of bringing the aliens to Earth. Following the incident where Tatiana disappears from the footage using alien technology, the reality of Jack's death brings Jin to a critical realization. She was on the verge siding with wrong people. She decides to confide in Dashi and Wade. She told them all about Sentis. However, 
Dashi proposes a daring strategy for Jin to pretend to be part of the cult and attend their meeting and uncover the identity of its leader. Their aim is to apprehend the cult's head. Mike, who has aged considerably, has spent the last 50 years aboard a ship equipped with a massive antenna, leading the now the cult have become large in size. He has been continuously transmitting detailed information about humans to the aliens to ensure their domination of Earth is met with no resistance. During one of his transmissions, Mike attempts to educate the aliens about humanity's capability to lie, an unfamiliar concept to the aliens. This revelation causes the aliens to reconsider their plans, realizing that coexistence with humans, whom they cannot trust, might be impossible. Consequently, following Jin Police's directives, she attends the cult meeting, where the cult's founder is revealed to be an aged Wenji. She speaks passionately about the arrival of the Senti aliens in 400 years, and the necessity of preparing Earth for their arrival, hence weakening humanity to ensure the aliens face no challenge upon their arrival. However, as Wenji delivers her message, Dashi's plan is set into motion. The police, acting on the information provided, raid the meeting and begin arresting the cult members. Tatiana notices that police extracting Jin secretly, she finds out Jin was deceiving them. Tatiana starts to shoot at the police in the mid of rush. Police had already arrested Wenji and many cult members and Jin was also extracted safely, but Tatiana managed to escape. After harsh interrogation, they found out that Mike can still contact aliens from his ship. The ship is in international waters, so that no country can harm them. Now, they have to somehow destroy the ship and extract every data from the ship, so that they can find how much information the cult members have shared with the Senti aliens. Augie is told to again develop the nanomaterial she was developing. This material was not only robust and capable of cutting through the ship's structure, but also invisible. Their strategy succeeded successfully, making the ship inoperative and fatally injuring those aboard, including Mike who attempted to delete the critical data in vain. The security team managed to secure all the data before any could be lost. However, decoding the data proved challenging. Wade and Jin then wears the helmet and entered a virtual reality where the Senti aliens shared their growing fear about humans. Through mankind's history, they observed concepts foreign to them. Deception, greed, lie, and the intelligence humans exhibited were extremely high. They were particularly taken aback by humanity's exponential progress over the last 50 years, surpassing all alien expectations. This revelation brought to light a new perspective. By the time the Senti aliens would arrive on Earth, 400 years humans could potentially possess capabilities far beyond the alien zone. So, the Senti aliens, although not yet physically present on Earth, devised a new strategy to assert their influence over the planet. So the Sentis developed a technology, a supercomputer powered by alien AI, capable of covering the entire Earth like a dome. Remarkably, this AI didn't possess mass, enabling it to travel at the speed of light and arrive on Earth few years ago. The mysterious phenomena observed by humans, the defiance of physics, the strange sequences of numbers witnessed by the scientists, and the flickering stars, were all manipulations by this alien AI. Now, the alien AI finally reveals itself globally, becoming visible to everyone around the world. It also took the form of an eye, symbolizing the alien surveillance over Earth. Jin and Wade removes the helmet and see there is chaos everywhere on Earth. There was messages displayed everywhere saying that human beings are nothing just bugs and mosquitoes to them. The AI supercomputer visible everywhere on Earth can shows whatever they want. In response to this unprecedented crisis, law enforcement and military forces were mobilized to maintain order. Recognizing the gravity of the situation and the need for a unified response, a special meeting of the UN was summoned. As still 400 years are left, they can easily prepare well. In response to the threat, Dashi and Jin confront Wenji, branding her as one of humanity's greatest villain. Wade steps up, assembling a global team of brilliant scientists. The team's primary goal was to gather as much information as possible about the aliens, including their biology, survival mechanisms, and energy sources. The scientists proposed a bold strategy, launching a probe to intercept the alien spacecraft in the route to Earth. After months of intensive work, they developed a probe capable of near light speed travel. Due to the constraints of physics, no human could accompany the probe without significantly increasing its mass, making the mission infeasibly expensive and complex. Nevertheless, humanity was determined to exhaust every resource to ensure its survival. Wade proposed an idea of embedding a human brain within the probe to facilitate data collection and transmission back to Earth. The challenge was finding a volunteer for this unprecedented procedure, which required transplanting a brain from the volunteer's body. The solution came in the form of Will, a scientist with terminal cancer, who, facing his imminent demise, agreed to donate his brain to the cause. Tragically, after launching the probe toward the alien spaceship, contact was lost, 
the mission was failure. Will's brain now is lost in endless space. Thanks for watching. Please like the video and subscribe the channel for more sci-fi videos.